We go through this every year. You know perfectly well what holiday it is. Okay, okay. <laughs> Happy Halloween, everybody. <laughs> we'll be. Row 18, plot 20. Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. We are still doing Halloween shenanigans here on the channel. We are, just one second, oh, oh, as if, uh, we are doing a movie called Satanic Hispanics. And yeah, it is what it sounds like. Um, this is a anthology film. I did not know that going into it. I happen to have reviewed quite a few anthologies this October, um, which is not a bad thing. I do like anthologies. This one did anthology the way I love it, where we have stories that intertwine. Um, in between stories, we have appropriate um, interactions with the storytellers, uh, so to speak. We have like an opening, uh, we have stories that are being told by a particular storyteller, then it cuts to the, the non-storytelling part of the movie that threads into the next story. And then at the end we have a wrap-up kind of a thing. And this does that for me. Um, Satanic Hispanics is technically a 2022 release, except that it uh, released in the U.S., uh, September 14th, 2023. Um, it's listed as a horror comedy um, in some places. And there is comedy in this. But it's not like schlocky comedy. Um, it, it's... There's there's like two stories. One is, is intentionally kind of comedic. And the other one just has some some comedy moments, some jokey type things that happen. Um, I don't want to go too into detail because that's the, the one struggle with um, anthologies is that you have these stories. This one's uh, listed as having five stories. There's really kind of four stories. The fifth story is the big story, the overall arc. Um, this is uh, written and directed by all Latino and all of the cast for the most part like I would say 95% there's it's all Hispanic Latino uh, actors speaking there's English there's Spanish being spoken predominantly English and there uh, is always subtitles um, that pop up um, the story the overall story is when police raid a house in El Paso, they find it full of dead Latinos and only one survivor, known as the Traveler. He is taken to the police station for questioning. There, he recounts tales of horrors from his life, chronicling portals leading to other worlds, mystical beings, demons, and the undead. He speaks of legends from Latin America. Satanic Hispanics tell stories from top Latino filmmakers that showcase the skills of Hispanic talent both on and off screen. Um, which is all like bonus for me because that wasn't... I just see Satanic in the title and I love uh, religious Satanic type movies. Um, and that's not what this ended up being, but I was pleasantly surprised um, about that. Directed by Alejandro <clears throat> Bergais, Mike Mendez, Gigi Sal Guerrero. Um, there should have been another one listed there, but there's not. Written by Pete Barnstrom, Alejandro Mendez, Lino K. Vila. There's a huge cast. I'm going to try to just um, mention a few of them. Efren Ramirez is the traveler. Really good. I think that he did a great job. Um, most of his scenes are all in an interrogation room. Um, they're in the one comedic um, story. There is a character named El Vampiro. Uh, he was played by Hemke Madeira, and I thought that was really well done. Um, two very notable. Uh, non-Hispanic actors play the police detectives. Greg Grunberg 
plays Detective Arden, and Sonia Eddy plays Detective Gibbons. You'll definitely recognize them. They've been in all sorts of other things. Um, but there is a huge cast of, of actors and actresses in this. So, <clears throat> yeah, the uh, tagline of this movie is all Latino as fuck, uh, AF, but uh, you get the idea. This was really, really good. I was so, so uh, into this movie. I, I thankfully watched this anthology all through at one time. Sometimes with anthologies, I'll take breaks, especially if they're movies that are not engaging me and my attention span. This one uh, kept my attention span the entire time I watched it from beginning to end, all in one sitting. Um, it started out with a very compelling story um, with a, a guy who was a Rubik's Cube uh, competitor. And uh, just that first story was really, really good and uh, was kind of neat. Um, he was using kind of like light sequences to be able to see something and I, I he inadvertently unlocks like a vision and then brings in a neighbor to also see if they can also see the vision and he can but it's something different and that's that's kind of like as far as I can go with that uh, that's technically the second story. The third story is the va Vampiro one. Uh, that story takes place on Halloween night, which is pretty fun. Um, just some comedic, really smart kind of plays on vampire tropes. And um, just, he's an older vampire. Um, and then he's got his... Uh, his... his uh, Igor, it's a woman um, who's his caretaker, I guess would be a better term for that. Um, and then their dialogue and intera interactions are really good. It's a smart, written, um, short, you know, story in this mix. The fourth one was the probably the one that just was the least engaging for me, but still it was good. It, was, it had to do with, like, uh, shaman ritual sacrifice and things of, of that nature um and it's got like tribal uh in the in the forest kind of tribal things going on with sacrifice and uh it was probably the one story that i was the least engaged with but again it really wasn't bad and then the last one um it was slightly humorous like this one is the one not nearly as comedy driven as Vampiro one, but this one had comedy elements into it. A lot of it was one liners and things like that. This one had to do with like the uh, build up for the actual climax of the whole story. So like they kind of intertwined this Saint Killer idea uh, with a story about Malcolm. <laughs> <laughs> of all of all names, which happens to be the name of uh, my haunted doll that's off camera there, Malcolm. Um, and uh, it has this really funny, the, the weapon of choice is the hammer of Xanazar. Xanabar, Xanabar. So it's just so bizarre how we, the, the story of how Malcolm acquires the hammer of Xanabar is really, really clever, very funny. Um, maybe it is a little more comedic now that I'm thinking back of it uh, uh, than I was originally saying. But then after that story, we get like directly into the um, the wrap up and it's very action packed. It's, it's a big, huge like police station bloodbath massacre. Um, the traveler the whole time that he's been in his interrogation has been telling the detectives that they need to let him go or they're all going to die because it's coming, it's coming. Well, by the end of the movie, it's there and uh, it's very, very well done. Very, very high props on this. Did I say what it was rated on IMDb? 5.6. It only has 201 reviews. 
Uh, I rate this even higher. This is like in the seven to seven to eight uh, star range for me, especially as far as anthologies go. This, like I said, this one did the anthology theme really, really well. Everything meshed good. The stories were good. Um, I think maybe the comedic uh, stories maybe took it down a few notches for people that are like diehard wanting to keep that vibe going that you start off with in the first story because it's a drastic difference between the the feel the vibe of the first story into the to the comedic vampiro one but for me it all worked so i loved it let me know in the comments down below if you saw satanic hispanics and what did I say? I saw this on Amazon. I'm pretty sure I watched. I've been kind of doing a lot of Amazon Prime lately. Um, but anyways, leave some comments down below. Thanks for tuning in to the Halloween shenanigans this whole month. We've only got one more day left. Uh, but there's always next year. <laughs>